In this video, we're going to compare and review femtosecond LASIK, Relex Smile Surgery, and that of PRK. These are the most common forms of refractive eye surgery, and if this is something you are considering getting, then you're going to want to know about the pros and cons of each of these procedures and some extra tips on what to think about before getting any form of refractive eye surgery. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome, this is Dr. Joseph Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, the channel that helps you learn everything about the eyes. Now today we're talking about three very important procedures in the world of eye care. We're talking about LASIK, we're talking about SMILE, and that of PRK. First of all, let's just break down some of the major differences between these three procedures, as well as going over some of the pros and cons of each. Now let's work through them in chronological order, starting with PRK, being that that is the oldest, then we'll hit up LASIK, and then we'll go over SMILE surgery, being that that one is the newest one. PRK stands for photorefractive keratectomy. And this is a procedure where your surgeon doesn't really need to cut into the eye at all. Instead, they use a solvent to loosen the front surface of the eye called the epithelium. They remove that, and then they use an eczema laser to basically carve and vaporize the corneal tissue and remold it to compensate for any need for glasses. Then, a bandage contact lens is placed on the eye, and over the course of the next week and several months, the corneal tissue begins to heal and stabilize. Now, compare that of PRK to LASIK, which stands for Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomalesis. And most clinics that are doing this procedure these days, they use what is called femtosecond LASIK. That is the complete bladeless LASIK where everything is done with lasers. Your surgeon would first use a femtosecond laser to make a cut on the front surface of the eye in almost a complete kind of a C shape, leaving just a little bit attached so that they're able to lift up about one fifth of the cornea up like a hinge. And then with the stromal bed underneath, then your surgeon uses a different laser, again, that eczema laser, and then they basically carve and reshape mold that stromal surface, similar to PRK. But with LASIK, they can then put that flap back down, allowing it to self heal. And because of this flap and how it heals, the surgery is very quick, basically painless, and after the procedure, almost most people end up seeing pretty close to 2020 just after the procedure right away. That's one of the reasons why LASIK has been so extremely successful over the last 20 some years. Now let's talk about the RELEX SMILE procedure. RELEX stands for Refractive Lenticule Extraction, and SMILE stands for Small Incision Lenticule Extraction. Now, funny enough, uh, I don't hear many surgeons refer to it as Relex Smile anymore. I hear most surgeons refer to it just as the Smile Eye Surgery. But because it is so new, we hear a lot of doctors kind of referring to it as almost the LASIK 2.0 in a way. The Smile Eye Surgery works a little bit more complicated, and it has to do with the cornea being so thick. And then they're able to use a femtosecond laser to basically carve out a center chunk of the corneal tissue. They cut out the center chunk in the shape of a lens to again compensate for your need for glasses. And then that center lenticule that they carve out, they then pull it out of the cornea through just a two to three millimeter cut. I always found it easier to visualize like somebody trying to carve out and hollow out a loaf of bread and then somehow pulling out all the innards of the bread out through a two, three millimeter hole. That's just a kind of an easy way to explain it, kind of a good mental image to have. But the smile procedure is nice because then you get to avoid making such a large cut like you do with LASIK and that helps reduce some of the potential side effects. Okay, pros and cons, which is better? Smile versus LASIK versus PRK. Let's hit it. All right, so some of the pros of having the PRK surgery is first that it is great for people with thin corneas or people with a high prescription. In fact, here in the United States, the FDA has approved PRK for people up to 12 diopters of nearsightedness, six diopters of astigmatism, and up to five diopters of hyperopia. That may not qualify for everybody, but they are pretty large parameters. And for people who maybe don't qualify for LASIK uh, because they don't have enough tissue on their eye, then oftentimes, PRK may be offered as a substitute. PRK is also excellent for people who are fighters, officers, or maybe in the military. And PRK can be good for people with coexistent eye issues, such as scars or loose tissue on the eye. The biggest downsides to PRK really falls down to healing time and then kind of pain or discomfort during the healing. The procedure itself is virtually painless because they numb everything up, but the healing time for the tissue to grow back, and uh, that's usually the uncomfortable, irritating problem. Yes, people definitely get through it and say that 
that it's worth it, but if you ask anybody who's had the procedure before, they will say, yes, they were pretty uncomfortable and in pain for at least a few days to a week. Now, when it comes to the pros and cons of LASIK, some of the big pros of LASIK is number one, that it is a very fast healing procedure. Uh, again, right away after the procedure is done, most people are seeing very well. It does have a similar range of corrections, similar to what we mentioned in PRK. And a lot of the surgeons out there, this is something they've been doing for a long time, and they are just incredibly accurate and very good at this procedure. Probably the biggest con about getting LASIK eye surgery is that of dry eyes afterward. About 20 to 40 percent of people who get LASIK immediately start having dry eye symptoms. However, it does often resolve within the first three months. But there are some people who those symptoms continue on for the next six and up to 12 months. And about 20% or one fifth of people studies have found continue to have long lasting symptoms of dry eye after LASIK. That's exactly why you'll have so many LASIK eye surgeons telling patients, hey, you need to be using artificial tears frequently after the procedure. And it's something that we even look for before having our patients go for LASIK eye surgery. We do a very thorough dry eye evaluation to make sure there's no existing dry eye before the procedure. The smile eye surgery does carry some pros in that it is virtually painless and it's very quick, so very similar to LASIK in those regards. It then also keeps the biochemical structure of the cornea more intact, which is more of a safeguard for people who have eye pressure or glaucoma that runs in their family. And then at this time, SMILE may in fact be better for people with dry eye issues in that after LASIK, again, dry eye is about 95% incidence at that first week after this, after a LASIK procedure, but it's only about 56% incidence after somebody who gets SMILE. And then at least in one study after having SMILE, uh, most patients did have a return to baseline of their dry eye symptoms after three months. As far as the negatives for SMILE, that includes the fact that it's only approved right now for people with nearsightedness or myopia, and then for astigmatism. So if you're farsighted, I'm sorry, a SMILE may not be a good option for you. And then finally, it is a new procedure. So sometimes finding a surgeon who's even offering to do SMILE on patients uh, is pretty low. And then finding a surgeon who has a lot of experience doing the SMILE procedure can also be challenging. So just some things to keep in mind. Now, next up, I do just wanna share some general information information and statistics about all of these procedures just to better kind of aid you in your thoughts about pursuing any form of refractive eye surgery, including LASIK, SMILE, or PRK. And then finally, some tips just to help you with your overall experience getting prepared if you're going to carry through with getting one of these procedures. First of all, all these procedures do offer excellent vision and helping reduce someone's dependency on glasses and contact lenses, right? That's the whole purpose of having refractive eye surgery. And studies have shown that SMILE, LASIK, and PRK all result result in very similar and excellent outcomes in terms of their safety, their efficacy, their predictability, and their stability. Just some interesting statistics of note, especially for SMILE, is that one study did report that SMILE versus PRK, that at one month period, patients who received SMILE did have slightly better visual outcomes versus PRK, but after three months, uh, PRK did have just a very slight advantage in terms of patients hitting 2020 versus SMILE. However, in another study that compared SMILE versus LASIK, after three months, the patients who received SMILE did achieve slightly better visual outcomes just because a few more patients in that study did achieve 2015 vision better than 2020. However, for all of these procedures, depending on what your doctor thinks may be best for you, in my experience in the clinic, most people almost always hit pretty close to 2020, if not a little bit better. No doctor can guarantee that for you, but they're aiming for that. And again, at least in my experience, most people have just outstanding vision after the procedures. Now, there are just a few cons or really things I think people should know about or consider before having any refractive procedure. Number one is that of regression. LASIK, PRK, and SMILE have all shown great outcomes and stability for at least 10 to 15 years following the procedure. However, do keep in mind, once people hit about the age of 45, that's when the medical condition of what's called presbyopia begins to ensue, and that's when people start to be more dependent upon reading glasses or bifocals, things like that. So if your whole goal of getting refractive surgery is to get rid of glasses, contacts for the rest of your life, you won't ever need anything again, 
unfortunately that's just not realistic the eyes do continue to change as you get older next is that of kind of this halo effect for the first four to six weeks following the procedure this is kind of this worsening glare especially at nighttime of oncoming headlights and things like that this is definitely a risk for basically all of these procedures especially people who have really large pupils or high prescriptions however over time because of improvements in the laser technology and the surgeon skills this is something that we just don't see as often anymore but if you are somebody who's young and has a large pupil size then something your doctor may just discuss with you about and then finally when it does come to dry eye issues uh, right now it seems like at least in the literature smile may have the advantage of having less complications due to dryness this is mostly because again the LASIK procedure cuts more of the corneal nerves where the smile procedure only cuts about two to three millimeters of it there's also a possible benefit because the smile procedure doesn't use as much suction pressure as the LASIK procedure does that means less surface is kind of disrupted or irregular. That means less tissue damage and disruption leading to better healing and less inflammation. But again, that's all based off of studies and reports that are published at the timing of this video. So as science and medicine kind of improves and we get more information, uh, who knows? This may change. All right, now I do have a couple of tips for you that I want to share because if you are considering having any form of refractive surgery, uh, I think these tips are going to help you out. But before I jump into that, please let me know in the comment section if you do have any other questions about any of these procedures specifically. I'd love to be able to read those and get back to you. Also, if you are finding this information valuable, please hit the like button for us and subscribe to the channel so that you can keep learning about the eyes and seeing your best. My first tip for you is to consider going through a thorough dry eye evaluation before going ahead with having any of these procedures. As we've talked about, dry eye is a major part of kind of the consequence or, or negative effects of having some of these procedures. And studies have shown that 30% of candidates for a refractive procedure are already having having dry eye symptoms, and about 50% of those people already have dry eye signs on the surface of their eye. That means that there is this disconnect. There's more people who have dry eye than they realize it or even feel their symptoms. So again, it's just super important to have things thoroughly evaluated before going ahead with surgery even if you think you don't have dry eye. And tip number two, and it sounds funny to say this, but definitely go see a respected eye surgeon in your area. Uh, there are people or, or places that offer like special cheap discounts. And just the reality is these are your eyes. You only have two of them. And these procedures are permanent. So I, I just don't recommend going to like a super cheap place because you know they had like a Groupon deal or something like that. If you do want to save some money on these procedures, sometimes checking with your medical insurance or if you have a vision discount plan, they sometimes will take a few hundred dollars off. But definitely ask your surgeon or wherever you're going for possible payment plans, military discounts, first responder discounts, those sort of things. And then finally, there is another procedure that we didn't cover in this video, but I have done in a previous video all about ICL implants. To learn more about ICL and if that is a procedure that may be even better for you, go ahead and click or tap the screen over here to the side and check that one out. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out with us. Again, this is Dr. Allen. Keep an eye on it and we'll talk to you soon.